What is a brand that is not in decline or actually improving on quality? I look forward to your answers to this question. Which brand doesn't deteriorate or get more expensive? Enjoy watching. Story 1. A brand that I have more recently gotten into that seems to stand the test of time is Pendleton. They are an Oregon-based wool blanket manufacturer that was founded in the late 1800s, but now has branched out and makes clothing, luggage, bags, homewares, etc. They're vertically integrated as well, which reduces cost and helps guarantee quality. They're known for sourcing and paying indigenous artists for their patterns as well. I have a couple of t-shirts that are just beginning to wear out, but all of the bags, towels, and other wares I've bought are still in great shape. Story 2. One brand that seems to be consistently maintaining or improving its quality is Apple. Despite occasional controversies and criticism, their products continue to be highly sought after and generally well regarded for their design, performance, and innovation. Story 3. My 2012 Apple Retina. MacBook Pro works just as good today as it did then. I still have a few old iPods from back in the day that I still use. I have found that even old iPhones last forever, but the temptation to buy the new ones is the actual issue, not the quality of the old ones as they tend to last the test of time. Story 4. Motorcycle-wise, Triumph. Since the early 2000s has consistently made better quality bikes, more reliable, more powerful, lighter, and the cost has not gone up that much. Their top-of-the-line bikes are still half as much as a decent Harley, which is not nearly as good IMO. Story 5. Not improving, but always amazingly well-made. Yand. Outdoor equipment company that specializes in cycling and hiking stuff. I have bought two messenger bags from them over tilde 20 years that held up despite having the crap kicked out of them. Only bought the second because the first looked too grimy from the outside to bring to work. Inside was pristine. Story 6. People never believe me when I say this, but cars are overall more reliable today than they've ever been. Something you bought two, three years ago will most likely last longer than something made 20 years ago, which lasted longer than a car from the 90s. Some will fail, and people will point to their 25-year-old Camry and claim new cars are junk, but that's a tiny sample size and textbook survivorship bias. Also, widespread steering wheel and voice controls make driving so much better. I can set a new GPS destination, adjust cruise control, and check my tire pressure without taking either hand off the wheel. Story 7. If anyone has said Bosch already, I totally agree. I wanted to get a mixer for the kitchen, and it seemed like KitchenAid was the one to get. I mean, every video I saw on YouTube when mixing cookies or anything, they were using a KitchenAid. But then, just for fun, I did a little research on which mixer was the best because it did always seem weird that the folks on the videos were stopping to scrape the bowl and pouring in ingredients while it was mixing was next to impossible. I had never even seen a Bosch mixer, and it looked really strange. But it was rated the best. It had both an inner and outer bowl scraper. And nothing was over the top of the bowl, which made it easy to pour things into the bowl when mixing. Plus, there's two mixing heads instead of just one. The downside was, yes, it's a bit more expensive, but wow, it's incredible. It's so worth the money. I can't even tell you. And I hear the same thing from other products they make. So I'm a firm believer in Bosch. I do not work for or am getting paid for this endorsement. Story 8. Thoroughgood boots, specifically the mock toe style. Still made in the States. Still made really well and still holding up well. My dad wears Red Wing and likes them too. But my brother bought a pair of new Danners, and they fell apart pretty quickly. Unlike my 20-year-old pair of Danners that is holding up solidly still, Thoroughgood started with a solid-ass product and, as far as I can tell, has not neutered it. Harbor Freight is a good one. I've been very impressed with my granite gear equipment. They seem to be innovating and improving while not throwing away quality. Durston is a newer, smaller one that really seems to be kicking ass in the outdoor market. He's put out a variety of new tent and pack designs that all seem to kick butt. I liked my X-Mid one enough that I'll likely buy a X-Mid 2 solid this fall for shoulder season trips. And they're really intelligently designed. Convention loops and clips everywhere for setup, double vestibule, magnetic catches for holding the rainfly door open, etc. And appear to be well built and very affordable for what you get. Story 9. For cat owners out there, the litter robot from Whisker. The Litter Robot 4 is expensive, yes, but a freaking godsend. And they had an issue where if cats pissed high and toward the front, it would leak in the small gap between the globe that turns and the plastic housing of the robot. Well, after a few months, a third-party market developed where people 3D printed shields that could snap on to block the piss. Whisker, the manufacturer, 
took notice and just started including a similar snap-on shield themselves that works perfectly. They're also always just improving the software and sensors with firmware updates. And the whole unit is way quieter and smarter than the, the Litter Robot 3, which is still a great unit. I was extremely hesitant to shell out the massive bucks to get one. But holy crap, it's worth it. And just light years ahead of what has become a very crowded market in automated litter pans. Story 10 Hyundai. I am old enough to remember when they first came to North America with the Pony and the Excel. They were horrific. I mean, so bad it ruined the brand and they were the butt of jokes. Now, they make pretty good cars and have sub-brands like Kia and Genesis. But they struggled with that reputation and provided one of the best warranties in the biz to do so. Story 11. A lot of the big-name outdoor gear brands are doing great. While I'm not into ultralight backpacking, the durability to weight ratios are extremely impressive. The company that's really stood out to me as far as gear I've used is Nemo. It's not cheap gear, but everything I've tried is very comfortable and can take a beating. Story 12. Dropout. Formerly College Humor's streaming service that is independent now and is easily the streaming service that is most worthy of my money. They have been consistently investing in the people they employ, the community they have cultivated, and in the programming they produce. Their content is hilarious and positive, and I cannot get enough of it. Story 13. Garmin watches and chrome bags and backpacks. I love buying chrome bags used because I know, unless the owner used it in unintended ways, that it's still going to be solid as ever. They're made to be used and abused and take forever to wear in but never wear out. The only thing I've ever broken on a chrome bag was a plastic buckle, and they replaced the buckle for free and asked me to hire a professional to sew the new one on and asked me to forward the receipt. I was so happy with the free buckle I would never think to forward them the receipt. That's good business. Customer for life. Story 14. Not a brand, but a company. Revzilla. Motorcycle clothing, gear, parts, etc. Store. They have the best customer service. They're willing to answer any question, usually by either finding a guy at the store who's done it or pulling gear out and fucking trying it if that's reasonable. That customer service is what keeps me going back to buy stuff instead of hitting up a direct retailer or Amazon. They sold the brand last year, and I fully expected the typical enshittification. But so far, they're holding on. Story 15. This may not align with hardcore power tool people, but I beat the crap out of my Ryobi stuff and it never dies. And it's like half the price of some of the other brands. They also keep coming out with more and more shit, and I'm always astonished at how it doesn't cost more than it does. Battery power tools in general are just amazing and improving at a ridiculous rate. Last year, my old gas chainsaw died, and I couldn't find a new one to replace it with. I bought a Ryobi battery-powered one, and it mowed through a tree trunk and cut it up into pieces better than my gas one ever could. And it's clean, and doesn't require me pulling a cord until I'm on the verge of needing Tommy John surgery. Story 16. Hear me out, Planet Fitness. Literally all gyms around me have either increased costs, brought absolutely zero benefits to back up the costs, I had Gold's Gym, but it was just stupidly expensive. I mean, come on, $1.140 sign-up fee, $1.20 bi-weekly, and $1.70 annual fee. LA Fitness, One Life Fitness, and Orange Theory are all on the same boat. If you want to bring a friend, it'll be $1.10 for the day, or receive some pass that's valid for a few days. If you want a personal trainer, that's an additional $1.100-$200 per month. Planet Fitness, on the other hand, is $10 a month if you're looking to just bring yourself and get a quick workout in, $1.20 if you want to bring a friend and some extra amenities. As time goes on, this starts to be a pretty damn good deal. They've overhauled the machines to show reps and sets, along with more variety of different muscle groups. The gym intimidation nonsense is completely dropped where I live as I've never seen anyone genuinely use it. I swap between four PF gyms. There's also a Planet Fitness app that you can use as your card to get in and also features some workout tips and perks. I've used some and it's pretty neat. My only complaint is the lack of a free bar, but the Smith machines alongside dumbbells and curl bars gets you the basics of what you're missing out on. If you're just an average guy or someone who isn't looking to make bodybuilding your profession but wants to gain muscle, Planet Fitness is one hell of a good gym with good quality machines for $1.10.20. Story 17. Abercrombie and Fitch. I'll admit that I don't really remember the quality of the clothes back in the 2000s, but I do remember the decline of the brand about 10 years ago after the CEO said all those things. 
I also remember it was basically an overpriced clothing store for preppy teenagers. However, the store has pretty much rebranded itself into a more adult store, and the clothes are so good. The quality is great. The clothes are cute but appropriate for adults to wear, at least for someone in their late 20s, and it doesn't feel like the Abercrombie and Fitch from 20 years ago at all. It's gained in popularity the last few years, and I don't see it going down again soon. Story 18 Mini Minis were at or near the bottom of reliability lists for many years. However, the third-generation F56, especially those with the B46 BMW 2.0 engine, have been surprisingly very reliable. So reliable, in fact, Mini now places in the top five among all car makes in reliability ratings in both JD Powers and Consumer Reports. Story 19 Sure Microphones when I started working in television production in the ADS, one of the standard issue microphones for television, theater, and live music was the Shure SM57-58 dynamic mic. Hardly built, they took all kinds of punishment and were consistently reliable. The idiom that you could hammer nails with them and still use them in production. I was surprised to realize recently that Shure still makes the same product today. Story 20 Costco and their Kirkland signature line of products. I know they don't actually make most of their own stuff, they just source it from other producers and rebrand it for their stores, but in my experience over 20 years of shopping there, the Kirkland Signature brand is highly reliable and often better quality than name brand products available at a much higher price. Plus, the hot dogs. Quality has stayed about the same, though I'm admittedly bummed they don't offer the Polish dog option anymore. And when you factor for inflation, it's now a fraction of the price it was when it was introduced back in the 80s. Story 21, I posted about this in the opposite thread, but Briston is top-notch for audio gear. Stuff is built to last an apocalypse. Their customer service is top-notch, and they have a 20-year transferable warranty on their products. I've also seen them take things in for warranty work and renew the warranty for another 20 years. Additionally, if you go to the factory warehouse, they're usually open to giving tours of the whole facility where they build their gear. Story 22, coach handbags. I don't even consider them luxury handbags because the price for a coach handbag is reasonable compared to the price and quality of other luxury items. $300 compared to $3,000. I own two coach handbags and a wallet. I've had them for years and the leather is easy to clean. All the stitching stays in place. The lining is intact. I don't have any broken or missing hardware. If you've purchased a cheap handbag, you know how fast these things fall apart due to daily wear. If you buy from the outlet, you can get them at 75% off. So I'm out here buying $85 handbags that are buy it for life. Story 23. I just had two pairs of Corcoran military boots resold. One pair is 20 years old, the other approximately 15 years. Both have had multiple partial resoles and heels already due to constant wear. Leather is still going strong and takes a high shine. The zippers on the jump boots are still smooth as silk. I don't know any other sub-dollar 200 boots that are remotely this high quality. Story 24, Casio. Some things have changed, true, but you can never go wrong with any of their models. The cheap watches are surprisingly durable, and of course, affordable. A G-Shock may have changed in some ways, and the screwback models are still legendary. But get a brand new one today, and it'll last a lifetime just the same. They have the whole spectrum on all styles with all grades of quality and features, at all price points. And don't hesitate. The lesser models are affordable and not as sturdy, but that's far from staying they're fragile. They're little tanks in their own right. My 20 bucks AE1000 has seen things you wouldn't believe, and yet it ticks along. Good old toothpaste took care of the scratches, lol. The more I look elsewhere, the more I go back and get yet another one. And for my wife as well. Story 25 Costco. Still awesome and no greedflation. Membership price hasn't changed in forever and hot dogs are still $1.50. Honda. Still awesome vehicles and inflation adjusted. Cheaper than they were 30 years ago. My SO bought an Accord LX in 1992 for $1.16K. Inflation's adjusted that $1.38K. A new LX costs $1.27K today. And unlike a lot of cars doesn't have a market adjustment being slapped on it. See Sonic. Computer power supplies. They now offer a 12-year warranty on their best PSUs. Story 26. I'm someone who recently switched to getting groceries at Aldi, and I'm impressed. The quality has been great. I always look forward to what products they'll rotate in week to week, and I'm saving a ton of money. Like, genuinely, we've been saving $1.3050 a week on our grocery bill compared to other options in our area. 
I remember it being cheap because it was low quality odds and ends as a child. Story 27. Hyundai. Their new cars are sweet, and the design is much improved. I feel like you're getting a lot for the price, and it seems like they're trying to improve the reliability and are addressing the issues their customers are finding or having with their vehicles, constantly innovating and creating new stuff for their vehicles or adding new things to them to improve their desire as a brand. Story 28. I am a fan of MeUndies. I got a pair as an anniversary gift, and I've since worn out about 10 pairs of Hanes Elastic and replaced them with new MeUndies. They are the most comfortable boxer briefs I've ever worn, and I'll buy more when I need to replace the next pair of Hanes that dies. They are a little pricey, but given their longevity, it probably is a wash. Beat IDW, my first pair was in 2017. Still look and few brand new. Story 29. In 3D printing world, Bamboo Lab makes really solid products that took this hobby from headaches and tinkering to just load and print. They are more reliable than 2D printers that have years of development behind them. Just gonna mention that there was this one major incident when after their server turned off, a lot of printers that were powered up started reprinting last model. This has been fixed now, but overall very good quality. Story 30. Mad Cats were known for producing the shitty third-party controllers you give your younger sibling. They've since taken a huge hike in quality. Their Rat Series gaming mice are excellent. Mad Cats disappeared from the international market for a few years, and I was sad to leave the RAT's customizable length behind. Other mice just feel too small short for me. A few years ago, Mad Cats started producing internationally again, and as soon as my Logitech hero goes, I'm getting another rat. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, like it. Be sure to write comments and share your stories.